my communion celebration. I decided that I wanted to have a celebration because this past week was Earth Day. And I want to spend some time just acknowledging the blessings of the Earth. And we haven't had communion for a while, so I'm inviting you to a celebration of communion for the Earth and for all of us. So, you're invited to my backyard. As you look around, you will notice that it's not very inviting here. It looks a little tired, it looks a little barren, it looks a little empty. Well, have a look. As you can see, it's been weighted down by fall and winter. It looks dull, it looks barren, mostly lifeless. My planter is filled with decaying leaves and pine cones. The toilet planter is lacking its summertime charm. It really feels unwelcoming back here. So why would I invite you to my backyard when it looks like this to have a celebration? Well, let's listen to Job. I'm reading from Job 12, 7 to 10. But ask the animals, and they will teach you. The birds of the air, they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of every human being. As Job faced life's shattering circumstances, significant loss, and ill health, he came to a deeper awareness that God's knowing is beyond our comprehension. But God's power and grace is substantial. God's creative power and potency in our created world, and the evidence of this is our hope in desperate times. Paul shares his wisdom with the early church in Rome. Paul says in Romans 1.20, Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things the Creator has made. We also hear from Psalm, the Psalms about the blessings of the earth. In Psalm 33, 5, it says, God loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his steadfast love. Psalm 65, 9, 13. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. The real gift is knowing that we are part of this creative power, that we, like the earth and all its creatures, have the power to create new life, to heal, to reform, to restore, to transform. We share in God's abundant grace to become emptied life, to become fullness of life. It's part of the circle of life. In this, we find our hope. To celebrate this hope, I'm inviting you to join me for communion. You'll need to find yourself something to drink and some bread. I wouldn't be worried about whether it's actually grape juice or wine or bread or it can be whatever it is that you have handy. But take a moment now and uh, prepare your table.
as we prepare to feast together, I invite you to remember how Christ gathered with his disciples at the Passover table. They were gathered to remember how the Jews were liberated from slavery. And as they gathered, they were remembering all of their time together, their, their stories, their memories. They were friends. And they enjoyed their time together. There was uncertainty as they gathered, knowing that something new was coming, but not really sure exactly what that was going to look like. They trusted in Jesus who had led them this far, but they had an idea in their mind as to what was going to happen next, although it was ambiguous. And in the midst of that meal, Jesus stopped and he picked up the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and he said take eat this in remembrance of me this is my body broken for you and as the meal progressed he picked up the wine and filled the cup. And he said, take, drink this, and remember me. This is my blood shed for you. And so now as we gather, we invite the Holy Spirit to be upon this bread, this wine, we seek that God fill us with hope, new hope, in challenging times. Amen. This bread, bread of the earth, wholesome, comforting, nurturing, This bread is the soil, it is the sun, it is the rain. It is the hands that labored. This is the bread of life. again, not just wine, earth and rain and sun and labor. And the blood of Christ. This is the cup of hope. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, you have embraced us with your grace. You have encircled the world with your hope. You have given us abundance, showing us the way of nature to empty and refill. You've showed us that Love cannot be destroyed by death. We thank you for all the blessings and the joys of your creation. The winding rivers, the mountains, the 
massive oceans and all its creatures, winding roads and forests filled with lush green life. We ask that you share your wisdom with those in power to lead us in ways that care for this creation. Show us your way and your will as caregivers of the planet. Through Christ, give us the spirit of compassion and kindness and an instinctual responsibility for considering other as Jesus did. Fill us with your hope and your potential through grace. Be with all our friends and family across the world, our brothers and sisters. We especially remember today, oh God, our brothers and sisters in Nova Scotia. We feel for their despairing and the fear that this trauma has created in their communities and in their families. We pray for peace and healing. And we ask that you be upon the hearts of those who are troubled and disturbed. Help us to trust that you will restore and renew. We give you thanks in Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me for communion and to remember the earth. I send you away with blessings of love and patience. And I do look forward to seeing you again real soon. Many blessings. Amen.